everybody. Today I'm going to talk about divine love or agape love or unconditional love. And I'm going to talk about what um, the definition of God's love is. So I'm going to start with some scriptures in 1 Corinthians. Okay, wait a minute, i got to get to that page. Um, love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth and bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. So, um, love, I, I think that's a beautiful definition of what the Bible says love is. Um, and, you know, a lot of times many of us fail at walking in divine love, unconditional love. And today I'm going to talk about how to gain more of that love. One way is just to pray a heartfelt prayer from your heart, asking God to fill you with his love. And then just really working hard at being a more loving person. You know, when we become born again, God gives us all the tools to be a Christian. But, you know, love is like a tiny little muscle. It's like when a baby is born. A baby is born with all his or her muscles just and has all the same stuff mommy and daddy has. But that baby has to grow and mature and exercise those muscles to become strong like its parents' muscles. And so it's a good thing to pray for more love. I really think that's an important thing to ask God to help us to be more loving, ask God to fill us with his love. But we also have to develop that muscle by doing loving acts of kindness to one another and just like working on just being a loving person. So now I'm going to read some more scriptures on love. Okay, 1 John 4. 7 through 8. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. You know, um, a true born again believer loves all the time. You may not approve of people's sins, but you love the sinner. Um, for example, let's say you have a teenage daughter and she becomes pregnant. And, of course, you don't believe in um, premarital sex. You may hate what your daughter did, but that don't mean you hate her. Um, unconditional love would not throw your pregnant daughter out on the street to defend for herself. Yes, you're disappointed that she didn't wait till she's married to have sex, but she's your daughter and she's having your grandchild. And the best way to show your daughter love is to help her through that pregnancy, not... Uh, disown her or shun her and um, there's many other examples of that when people fall into sin yes we hate the sin but we love the sinner cutting people off from your lives is not unconditional love it's not going to help that person to repent it's not going to help that person to come back to God if anything it will make them more bitter that you rejected them and they may fall deeper deeper into sin for example the pregnant daughter may end up getting an abortion because you threw her out on the street and she has nowhere to go or turn to and no money to support a baby. And let's just say that um, you put a lot of fear in your daughter and she, let's say she becomes pregnant, you know, she made a mistake, she become pregnant. She may be so terrified and afraid to tell you that she's pregnant that she would go get an um, abortion because you are so strict and you scare your daughter so much. And I'm not saying we shouldn't have discipline because love is also discipline. But we should never put so much fear in our children that they're afraid to talk to us. So, um, let me, okay, so, um, so it says in 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 13, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, 
but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind, does not envy or boast, is not arrogant or rude, it does not ins insist on its own way, is not irritable or resentful. So, you know, I, all through my young adult life, I have been charismatic. And I really got deceived thinking that, you know, if someone speaks in tongues, that um, they're very close to God, and they can't, you know, they, they're just a better Christian than everybody else. And boy, did I get deceived with that. I got really hurt by uh, a lot of charismatic people. Uh, my own husband really broke my heart and was unfaithful to me. And so, you know, just because they operate in the gifts of the Spirit, it does not mean the Spirit of God lives in them. Um, you know, the devil can counterfeit the gifts of the Spirit. I do believe in the gifts of the Spirit. But, you know, and also the gifts are without repentance. So, you know, someone may have the gift of speaking in tongues or prophesying, but that doesn't mean that they can't backslide away from God and live in sin and still be able to have the gift to still operate in that gift. And um, we can't judge people by their spiritual gifts. We have to judge them by the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit is love. So, you know, we have to judge people by how much love that they walk in, not how many, many gifts that they operate in. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no wall. So I look at the gifts this way. Let's pretend that the electrical wire is the gifts of the Spirit. You know, that's the power of God. The fruit of the Spirit is the plastic coating around that electrical wire, and that keeps you from being electrocuted and shocked. So when somebody doesn't walk in love, and they have the gifts of the Spirit, it can cause some damage to a person's life if they're not walking in divine love. 1 John 4, 16, so we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. So, you know, if God lives in us, then we walk in unconditional love towards our brothers and sisters in the Lord, and towards our enemies as well. Uh, Matthew 7, 1 through 7, judge not that you be not judged, for with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your own eye, when there is the log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. So a lot of times it's easy for us to um, judge Others, you know, it's easy to look at other people's sins and say, you know, this person should repent and do this right. But we got to look in the mirror at ourselves and think, what can I do to be a better person? It's so easy to see everybody else's sins, but we must look in the mirror, in God's mirror, and, and look at ourselves and, and, and think, are we acting like Jesus would act? So Romans um, 12, 10, love one another with brotherly affection, outdo one another in showing honor. And I like to say outdo one another in showing love. We need to work so hard at loving one another. And, you know, um, a lot of times Christians are into the faith movement. You know, um, they're into having faith and moving mountains, but they're not working on their love walk. And just like 1 Corinthians says, we can have faith to move mountains, but if we don't have love, we are nothing but clanging symbols. Romans 13, 9 through 10. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covenant. And any other commandments are summed up in this one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is a fulfillment of the law. So, you know, if you're trying to work at being a good Christian and obey the Ten Commandments, all you need to do is just love your neighbor as yourself and you'll complete the whole law by loving your neighbor as yourself. You know, whenever you do something 
to someone, always think, you know, would I want to be treated like that? Would I want somebody to say that to me? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. 1 John 3, 1. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called the children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Jesus. John 13, 34 through 35. This is Jesus speaking. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also ought to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples if you have, have love for one another. So we are to love the way that Jesus would love. And the best way to receive divine love or agape love, whatever you like to call it, is to pray to the Father for more of his love in Jesus' name. And then we need to spend time in his presence, feeding on him so that we can fill up on his love. Okay, so um, Jesus says in Matthew 10, 37, Whoever loves father and mo mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And what, what he's saying there, he's not saying to hate your family, but you're to love God more. And, um, you know, you're to follow Jesus, whether your family wants you to or not. Matthew 5, 43 through 47. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of the, your Father who is in heaven. For he makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? So um, we are to pray for those who treat us bad, and we are to be kind to them. Now, that don't mean you let people take advantage of your stuff. There, you do have to have your boundaries. You do have to protect yourself. I mean, if someone's abusing you or wishing you harm, you do have to distance yourself from that person. But, you know, there's a lot of Internet stuff where let's, I've been in a lot of Christian boards and where people will debate different topics. and a lot of times the monitor is really guilty of this. If the Christian monitor doesn't like you or agree with what you're trying to say, they just block or ban you from the group. And I can understand if there's rudeness there. Let's say if, if like for me, when I have a message board, if you curse at my board or you put someone down, you're just downright nasty rude, I ban you. But I don't ban people for having a different belief than me. I think a uh, message board should be more about sharing, not that you should force your beliefs down someone's throat, but, you know, there's a difference between sharing what you believe and being pushy and forcing some, something down someone's throat. And if you're kind and loving and you're sharing, hey, this is how I believe about this particular subject, you know, I don't see anything wrong with that. And a lot of Christians like to just, you know, because you have a different belief, they don't measure on what you do agree with. Just major on that one little thing you don't agree with and they ban you. And I don't feel that's God's love. Galatians 3.28, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. There's no male or female for we are all one in Christ Jesus. And I would like to share my thoughts on that a little bit more. God loves all people of all races and janter. And he doesn't favor one race over another. And I know there are some of these people out there who think God only loves white people or Jewish people or whatever. God, God loves everybody. And Jesus laid his life down for everyone. And um, really, in all reality, there is no races in God's eyes. I guess you could say God, in a sense, he's colorblind. Yes, he may color. He does see color. But spiritually speaking, God does not look at color of skin. He looks at the heart. And you're, there's only two races in all reality. You're either a child of God or a child of Satan. There's no other races in between. So God does not look at um, black people or better Christians than white people or white people or better Christians than black people. God does not look at race at all like that. 
He only looks at you're either his child or you're Satan's child. And if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then you don't, you don't belong to God. You belong to Satan. And Satan is a stepfather. He's really not a real father at all because God created us. And in all reality, we're all God's children in that sense that he created us. I like to look at it as the butterfly. I look at the caterpillar as a person who's not born again. But the butterfly is still the parent of the caterpillar. But the caterpillar needs to get born again so he's not earthbound to this earth but heaven bound. And so God is our father in the sense that he created us. Satan has not created anything. He's just a stepfather and a very abusive stepfather at that. But to be, go to heaven, we must be born again. We must become that butterfly to be heaven bound. And so um, if, you ha if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you're not heaven bound. You're still that little caterpillar on the ground, and you're not going to go to heaven until you accept Jesus as your Savior. Then you can be heaven bound. Um, okay, so let me go. Okay, so... John 15, 13, greater in love has no one than this, that someone laid down his life for his friends. Now that can be a very tough one. But when you have unconditional love in your heart, you are willing to lay your life down for others. Matthew 6, 24, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in money. So um, that's a little bit of a different topic, but... You know, when we love God, we are not materialistic. When we have God's divine love in us, we're thankful for things that God gives us, but we don't worship those things. We love God more than material possessions, and we value people above our material possessions. Okay, Mark 12, 28 through 31. And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, asked him, What commandment is the most important of all? Jesus answered, The most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So first we have to love God. And as we love God and we repent of our sins and we ask Jesus to be the Lord of our life, God fills us with that divine love. When we ask God to please fill us with the Holy Spirit, please fill us with your divine love. He fills us up to where we can love ourselves and even people around us. Romans 3.24 and are, and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. 1 John 3.16 By this we know love that he laid down his life for us, we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. So, um, you know, God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Jesus came because he loved us. He laid his life down for us because of his love for us. And when we get so filled with Jesus' love, then we can do the same thing that Jesus did, lay our lives down for our brothers and sisters. Galatians 6 2. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of God, Christ. Um, 1 John 4 19. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he, has, he, he cannot see. Um, wait, let me read that again. My tongue got all twisted with that one. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. So if a person says they love God and they love Jesus, you know, and they love God's word and they hate someone, they're a liar. Because if God lives in their heart, they can't hate anyone. Okay, so 1 John 4, 10. And this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the perpetual well, atonement for our sins. 
a word that is a harder word for me to pronounce, but basically the atonement for our sins. Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and of merit, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Um, 1 Corinthians 1, 1 through 31. Paul called by the word of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and our brother um, Sisthens to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place called upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, um, both our Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge. Um, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. That's John 13, 34. Luke 10, 25 through 37. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And, he, and Jesus said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And of course, you, um, if he, if you go deeper into that story, it's about the Good Samaritan, and you had, um, oh boy, I'm trying to remember, the Levite, and um, there's a couple holy people in that story that did not walk in love with the um, Samaritan, or the, the guy that got beat up. But the Samaritan, who the Jewish people looked as their enemies, showed the guy more love than his uh, Jewish brothers. Okay. Matthew 22, 34 through 40. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, test him, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And, he, and Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. Of course, the second one is to love your neighbor as yourself. Philippians 2, 1 through 4, So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from um, fighting, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. So it's okay to love yourself and look out for yourself, but we got to learn to love other people. Start thinking of other people. Okay, so Colossians 3, 12 through 17. Put on men as God chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful with the word of Christ drown you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thanksgiving in your hearts to God. Proverbs 31, 1 through 31. The word of King Lemuel, an oracle that his mother taught him, What are you doing, my son? What are you doing, son of my womb? What are you doing, son of my vows? Do not give your strength to women, your waste to those who destroy kings. It is not for kings or Lemu, it is not for kings to drink wine. So I'm going to stop right here for now. But um, basically, we really do need to work hard at loving one another and praying for more of God's divine love. So I'm going to end with this prayer. And you can pray with me. Heavenly Father, I ask that you forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for not being a loving person. And Father God, I ask that you fill me with your Holy Spirit and fill me with your love. Help me to be a more loving person and to be more like Jesus. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you for watching my YouTube channel.